we're going to interrupt Siraj. We could interrupt Nazania. Hey, Siraj, what's, what's the conversation about then, man? Huh? What's the, yeah, yeah, I want to talk to you though. What's, what's the you conversation about? Me, I don't know. Conversation. Yeah, yeah, you want to talk about conversation? I don't need I want help. To... You know someone who's Christian, but I've been hands a bit defined. I don't need help. That's, that's fine, that's fine. Because Siraj interrupts our conversations all the time. So I want to interrupt his conversation. How are you doing, Siraj? You can't answer my question. Can you answer this question about this hadith where it says that a man killed a hundred people? Right, he murdered 100 people right? and he was forgiven. Yes. Literally straight after murdering 100 people. Now he seeks forgiveness, so it says right, he sought forgiveness after 90, killing 99 people. Yes. And then he kills an extra one after seeking forgiveness. Oh, now is that just or fair to you? Where did it say he killed oh, find cash. Yeah, sorry, cash. another find person cash. after he seeked forgiveness? Uh, so I'm going to read out. So it's a sign of the No, your question. I'm going to read out. No, you know what you said now? You just lied about the hadith. No, no. You said a man. Killed 90, uh, 99 people, nine people, yeah. And then he killed 100. And, and after that, he repented, you said. Yep. And then after no, he, he repented, he killed another person. Where is saying so let's, let's, let's read the hadith, repented, right? Sahar Bukhari. Let's read the hadith. Come down. Right, let's read the hadith, right? Sahar Bukhari, 3470, right? Narrated Abu Sayyid al Qudri. The Prophet said, amongst the men of Bani Israel, there was a man who murdered 99 persons. Remember, he's murdered them in cold blood. Murdered them in cold blood, right? We've got that. Then he said, then he set out asking whether his repentance could be accepted. So he's seeking repentance now. He's asking, can I be forgiven for murdering 99 people? Right? He came upon a monk and asked him if his repentance could be accepted. The monk replied in negative. The, the monk said, no, you cannot be forgiven. So what did the man do? Did he leave? No, he didn't. Th then he murdered the monk. He says the monk replied negative. So the man killed him. The man killed the monk. He was asking for repentance for killing people for. Now, how is that just? Okay, let me answer. First of all, does Allah send guy, people to heaven for killing people? Okay, sorry, sorry. Before the guy repented, he wanted to seek repentance. He wanted to repent. And then he murdered another man. He went to a guy who never knew about Islam. And the guy said, Allah will not forgive you because of killing so nine, he murdered nine him. people. And the guy said, okay, if that's the case, then he killed the guy. Yeah, he killed he the guy. He completed that, the, the amount of a hundred people. After that, he went to another guy, and the guy said, "Can I repent by uh, by killing? I killed 100 people. Can I repent?" The guy said, "Yes." He still killed 100 after, people in cold blood. After he killed the hundred pass, the hundred person, he repented. He never repented. No, no, he was seeking repentance for. So it I mean, says literally before. Was then he said, to, "Look, say he I'll read it again. I don't mind." Look, the prophet said, "Amongst the men of Bani Israel, there was a man who had murdered 99 persons." Then he set out asking whether his repentance could be accepted. He's seeking he repentance. He's literally seeking repentance. Right? Literally. Right? I just said English. So if I'm seeking repentance, okay, that me means I've done something wrong. No, let me but this is basic English. If I seek repentance for killing 99 people, that means I've done something wrong. But what does he do when he seeks repentance, Muslims? He says this. Then he set out asking whether his repentance could be accepted or not. He came upon a monk and asked him if his repentance could be accepted. The monk said no. The monk replied in negative. So the man killed him. Now, if I'm seeking repentance for murdering people, why am I going to kill a man who said no to me for seeking repentance? That makes no logical sense. I'm going to read the rest of the hadith okay. just to get a point. No, I know the hadith. Right? That, that's fine. I don't I care what you know. I'm going to read it for the camera. I don't care what you know. The I, 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 I can kill us. And the other guy yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go right. The monk the replied in a negative. So the man killed him. Let me finish the hadith, dude. Like, come on. Like, come on, bro. Like, we're all friends here. The monk replied negative, so the man killed him. He kept on asking till a man advised to go to such and such village. So he left it for dying. But death overtook him on the way. While dying, he turned his chest towards that village where he had hoped his repentance would be accepted. He's, he's seeking repentance twice now, even though he killed a person before that. Right? And so the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment crawled amongst themselves regarding him. Allah ordered the village towards which he was going to come closer to him. And he ordered the village whence he had come to go far away. And then he ordered the angels to measure the distances between his, his body and the two villages. So he was found to be one span closer to the village he was going to. So he was forgiven. He was for... Oh, dude.